Morning, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for braving the cold to come. Um, I am one of the orthopedic surgeons on the unit. We have seven of us. Uh, we all do fractures, so this is not just completely unique to me. Um, we all work in this area. I live in this area. And um, I'm going to talk to you about simple fracture management, things like looking at x-rays, uh, basic first aid, the alternatives to the fracture clinic, because I thought when I was looking at this last night that Everyone knows our fracture clinics look like hell, especially our Tuesdays, and they're difficult to get into. And I think we should offer our patients alternatives, and I'll be talking about that very briefly at the end. And I've got information on that uh, for anyone who wants to catch up with me afterwards. So we'll get cracking. Terrible pun. Okay, sometimes it's not subtle. Sometimes it's really obvious when a patient comes in and you think, yep, that's broken. That's very easy to look after. Send that off to be fixed. If you put displaced fracture into Google, that's search, that's image number two, thankfully. Sometimes it's not easy, sometimes it's very subtle, and sometimes it's hard to see. That's a toddler's fracture. It's very common in the two-year-old group, two and under. When they're learning to walk, they fall over, and there's a wee little crack. And I don't have a mouse, I just have arrows, but... Very commonly missed. Uh, in fact, they often come into our clinic, uh, and I do paediatric orthopedics as well, they often come to the paediatric orthopedic fracture clinic and will see callus around there and think, oh, you had a fracture. Okay, really basic principles for x-rays. When you're looking at them, um, I like to actually look at the image. Not that I don't trust the report, I just like to be able to look at the picture and convince myself that what, what I'm looking at. Make sure you've got the correct view. Uh, we have had, or I have had registrars tell me all about an x-ray on the wrong patient, or the wrong side, or the wrong part of the body. Um, if you can see a fracture when you're looking at it, wonderful, great, diagnosis done. If you can't see anything, the way I've taught registrars to look at x-rays is to look at every cortex. That means run your eye around the entire outline of the bone, or the area. Um, that's usually a really good way to see something because a fracture must start somewhere and it must finish somewhere else. There is no such thing as a crack in the middle of a bone that doesn't have exit points. Um, if you can't see anything, if you're highly suspicious, ask. I, I don't believe there's a radiologist who would be worried if you call them and say, look, I'm not sure, could you tell me, take me through this x-ray and tell me why you can't see anything or why you can see this fracture that I can't see. These are some examples from here. So this one's reasonably obvious. Um, a guy who was up a ladder, fell off the ladder, came in with his foot sore and swollen. Looking at this x-ray, uh, the toes don't line up. So that's a start. That's why looking at that you think, okay, there's something that's not aligned anymore. There's also some flicks around the bases of the metatarsals. This is called a Liz Frank injury, named after a nice Frenchman who describe people falling off horses and getting their feet stuck in stirrups. That's how you classically used to do it. You used to get foot stuck in the stirrup, you'd fall off the horse, and you'd end up with a variant of this. This, funnily enough, needs an operation. So this one's nice and straightforward. This one is actually not from here. This is from Sunshine. Um, I also do the pediatric clinic at Sunshine. This is a young boy who is at soccer. He tripped over and came in and he said, I've got a sore groin, and he had a huge bruise over his groin. Now, um, at the risk of getting audience participation, can anyone see what the problem with that is? You're not allowed to say anything, Caitlin, you know what it is. Have a look just above the acetabulum on the right-hand side, or just below it, rather. There's a little bit of bone. It's an avulsion. It's an iliac crest avulsion, iliac spine avulsion. Very common in athletes. Yep, that little round thing. Um, actually a reasonably benign thing. It's just painful and they get sore and swollen. and they can't do any of their sports for a little while. Common in athletes. Common in about the age group of, in boys at least, 13, because they still have a physis there. They still have tendons that are quite strong and often the, the weak stress point is the physis and that's where it fails and that's why you get this injury. This is probably the second most common fracture we get here. Ankle fractures. So ankles and wrists. They will be the bread and butter of what you probably will see, together with some of the um, information, uh, the information on simple fractures that I'll give you. Um, we see lots of them too. Okay. When you're looking at an x-ray, 
Um, the first thing I was told when I was training was stand back. Do not put your nose next to the x-ray because it's often very subtle. And because if you're looking, if you're coning yourself down to look at a small part of an x-ray, you'll miss a lot of things. So I stand back a couple of steps in my step, lots, in my case, lots of steps because I'm not very tall. Three feet. Get a broad appreciation of what you're looking at and also check obvious things like the site, the side, and make sure it's the right patient. Um, and as I said, a systematic review where you're looking at all the cortices. Uh, I sometimes start top to bottom. I start inside to out, outside to in. It doesn't matter. As long as you look at most parts of the x-ray, you won't miss anything. Simple fracture management. You will not go wrong if you give them their basic first aid, put a splint on, and the splint itself doesn't really matter, as long as it gives them some pain relief. Back slabs in the emergency setting are wonderful because they keep the patient's arm or limb still. It gives them some pain relief. It allows you some time to get your assessment done, which is your radiology and your other investigations, and it also gives you time to get some advice and decide what to do. Now, some basic guidelines for when you're looking at an x-ray or looking at a report or looking at a patient. Generally, if it's undisplaced, which means you can't see it, or someone else has seen it and you still can't see it, you have time on your side. They don't normally need something to be done right now. You can wait. Wait until their symptoms are abating, their swelling is getting better. Wait till you can get a hold of one of us. Wait until you get to emergency or fresh clinic. Generally, if it's involving a joint or very close to a joint, you are better off getting advice sooner rather than later. The tolerance for periarticular fractures differs according to the part of the body. For instance, if you have a scaphoid fracture, we allow one millimetre of displacement before we say it will operate. But in a distal radius, we'll allow two. It also depends, to a certain extent, on the functionality of the patient and their age. I'm more likely to fix a scaphoid in an 18-year-old, and I'm less likely to fix it in someone who's, not, who's 90. To be fair, they're less likely to get them because they don't tend to fall off their skateboard. If something is dislocated, get advice for it. Unless it's something very straightforward or it's, for instance, a finger, which some people are confident putting back. Um, lesions, they're not really fractures, but occasionally you'll see them on x-rays. If something is in a bone, chances are it's going to be benign, but you don't know by looking at it, you don't often know by asking the patient, get them to be seen. Uh, from from what I know from my unit, all of us have gone through St Vincent's, which is the tumour centre in Melbourne. All of us know how to deal with tumours. We don't always treat them because they should go to a central location. So we'll know what to do with it if it ends up at our door. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's in the little show bag, but we have a selection of common conditions for outpatient management uh, fractures. The reason I know what they are is because I wrote two of them when I was a registrar here four years ago. We hand them to the patients when they come to us. We have them available on the website. I hope they're in there. If they're not, they're actually in our plaster area and I'll show you the folder that they live in. Their colour, their colour information sheets, they have pictures, sometimes an x-ray. They have a description of what the fracture is and why it doesn't need surgery and the plan for management so that you have a plan of what to do with them. And red flags down the bottom where if something happens or if the condition changes, where to, where to send them, what to do with them, which is basically send them back to us. Now, in terms of fracture clinics and referrals, as I said this morning, uh, as I said this morning, as I said 10 minutes ago, fracture clinics are overbooked everywhere, not just here. Um, and ours runs at approximately 120 to 130 every Tuesday with other clinics that run on alternate days to try and mop up the, um, the excess. Getting patients in is difficult. I know because I do the triaging as well. There are alternatives. Um, we have a sports physician that comes in that can deal with some injuries. He, he actually has a bit of a wish list of things that he likes to see, which we can make available. There, are also, there is also a private clinic that does fractures in the area. I know because I run it. Um, if someone wants information on that, just grab me at the end. I'll tell you all about it and where it is and what we do about it. Now. I'm going to open it up to questions. What I want to know particularly from the audience is, at the moment, the services that we offer here, which is a fracture clinic and some orthopedic triaging and dealing with adults and children, is it meeting what you want? Do we need to add, subtract services? Is there a wish list that anyone wants to come up with of things that we don't do that we should do, other than showing you how to plaster? 
you can't all be 100% happy. Not possible. There is a bit of a delay in actually getting our patients from general practice referred over um, for your care here. Sometimes we get phone calls back from the patients saying, it's been two weeks. For Max level. Off of fractures. Some fractures can wait two weeks. If, we, if I've seen them and I've triaged 252, two weeks, then it means the fracture can wait. If we haven't seen them, then that's probably not a great thing. Although, to be fair, I think I tend to get to most fractures within days, to most of the triages. It doesn't happen often. I think it's just reflective of the, the service has been very much utilised, that's all. Oh, yes. Busy. Oh, yes. Busy, busy is an understatement for what we do. Um, <laughs> Mm. Uh, sometimes referrals just seem to go, they just, the facts yeah, just it doesn't arise. happen often. But no, but if there's any concern, please call and you can get someone to look at, number one, A, we can identify that we've received the fracture referral first, yeah. um, which is the positive thing, then we can actually trace it. So please, if there's any hesitation, we'll give you, I actually give you a number that you can go back with. Right. It goes straight through to a nurse on a resource desk. Um, sometimes it will be me, usually on Mondays and Thursdays, and I actually, um, work with that in the orthopedic clinic. Other days, even if it's not the orthopedic nurse there, they can certainly, they're able to find us on the floor. And they're also able to look for referrals for me. So I'll give you all that number to go away with, Great. but please use it. It's available 8.30 to 5. Thank you. And if it doesn't answer straight away, um, because the person's not quite at this at that moment, do try later on in the day. It is man for the whole day. The other thing I wanted to call everyone's attention to is that our orthopaedic registrars, we have four of them, being on call, they carry something called the on-call phone. So they don't have pages, they don't use their mobiles, they use a phone that goes straight through to them. So if you need to speak to someone, you can call the switchboard who will put you through to a phone instead of a service or an answering machine or whatever. Um, in the situation where they're either not answering the phone or they potentially could be scrubbed in theatre, there's no, there's nothing wrong with going higher up and speaking to the consultant, or trying to get one of the other registrars. They're they're there to be called, and that's that's their job. Having done their job before, I know that that's what they're supposed to be doing. So, you should be able to speak to someone for advice if you need to. That's why we're here. Okay. Does anyone have any more questions? Anything on their wish list? No. Wonderful. Okie doke. Thank you very much.